This portion of the news brought to you by McDonald's. McDonald's, I'm loving it. A local corporate sponsor hosted a Thanksgiving luncheon for a special group of educators at the College of the Bahamas today. Owner of Electro Telecom and businessman Paul Smith recognized dozens of administrators and teachers of the Oakfield Primary School and several junior high school welfare programs in New Providence at Choices Restaurant. For eight consecutive years, Mr. Smith, a former Oakfield Primary School student, now businessman, has been a leader in meeting the educational needs of outstanding students throughout the We Care program. While at the T.A. Thompson School, I got involved with their We Care program. And I can truly say because of the We Care program today, we went into the law enforcement basketball tournament to assist the underprivileged kids throughout New Providence. Last year basketball tournament, we were really not in the position to do what we have done for the previous years before. And I remember something that Mother Teresa said in one of her books. If you can't feed a hundred, feed one. And so the day when we cannot give the thousand dollars that we want to give to each school, on behalf of the basketball tournament, we would pledge to give each junior school some five hundred dollars to assist with their program. Prime Minister Perry Christie applauded businessman and humanitarian Paul Smith for giving back in such a tangible way. Ten years he has been donating computers to school children and being able to recognize that in his time those of his set would not have had such an opportunity. The fact that he was hosting a lunch, a luncheon, for the teachers of Oakfield Primary for some eight years. Again, is an extraordinary happening. Staff at the post office evacuated the building today after the fire alarm reportedly went off. Hundreds of staffers from the offices on East Street assembled in the parking lot awaiting the all clear. The fire department was called in. It's not clear what may have prompted the alarm. The University of Miami Hospital's helipad was officially dedicated in Miami with the Minister of Health taking part. Tonight, Chris Saunders tells us the minister pointed out that the helipad represents more than just a few a new landing spot, but also possibly the catalyst to building another one. And with that, the University of Miami Hospital officially launched its new helipad. Minister of Health the Honorable Dr. Perry Gomez assisted UM President Dr. Donna Shalala in cutting the ribbon. With the one at the University of Miami, the Minister of Health says a helipad could soon be built in Bimini as well. It's very interesting that as we look at developing Bimini, that they are, they at the University of Miami have the vision mm -hmm. to prepare for what they know will happen uh, very close to them. And so it is anticipated that a helipad will be erected in Bimini uh, as well so that the helicopter may land and take off from Bimini to reach the center for those people visiting the island of Bimini and for any local resident who is critically ill. It's another way for patients with very complex uh, disorders and injuries to reach uh, expert academic medicine as U Health expands its footprint um, around our region. Um, patients anywhere in the Caribbean will be able to land on our roof. Um, it's a new porthole for patients to reach our hospital where we're conducting truly breakthrough uh, clinical trials in stem cell therapy, for example. The Minister of Health also toured the Cardiac Catheterization Center at the University of Miami Hospital, along with touring the interdisciplinary Stelsem Institute as well. Gives us uh, the perspectives we need to know about what, what all is involved in, in, in stem cells. It's, it's, it's really in every facet of medicine that they are working with it here. And um, it's, it's illuminating. At the University of Miami Hospital in Miami, I'm Chris Saunders, ZNS Network News. 
Three cruise ships that were supposed to call in Nassau yesterday decided not to, and it was all because of the weather. The allure of the seas and the Carnival Conquest decided before even arriving at Nassau to cancel the stops because of the torrential downpours and gale force winds in the area. The Disney Dream did enter the harbor yesterday and was trying to dock, but the captain, assisted by three tugboats, could not make the spin to back the vessel into the dock because of winds near tropical storm strength. The captain then decided to cancel the stop. Well, it should be pointed out that it is normal for cruise ships to cancel stops because of weather conditions. Well, still to come tonight, a look at Farmer's Key. You're watching The Bahamas Tonight. This portion of the news was brought to you by McDonald's. McDonald's, I'm loving it. This is your Royal Fidelity Business News. I'm Jimenita Swain. The International Bar Association Presidential Task Force published a report on the global financial crisis. The report addresses the post-global financial crisis or GFC effect on poverty, challenges in the aftermath of the GFC and the role the law and lawyers can play in addressing the crisis. The report features contributions from four Nobel laureates. IBA Task Force Chair and Co-Editor of the report, Peter Maynard, said there are few contemporary issues more pressing than one billion people living in poverty. In other business news, the ACP FISH 2 program draws to a close this month. The project was a 30 million euro program funded by the European Union through the European Development Fund. For the last four and a half years, the program focused on strengthening fisheries management, improving food security and alleviating poverty in 78 African, Caribbean and Pacific states, including 15 in the Caribbean. The Bahamas used the funding to assist with modernizing fisheries legislation. At an international business news, the Associated Press is reporting that Ford is recalling the escape small SUV again, this time to fix oil leaks and fuel leaks that could cause engine fires. The popular SUV has been recalled seven times since it was redesigned and went on sale in the spring of 2012. The first of two recalls announced Tuesday affects more than 161,000 escapes worldwide from the 2013-year model with 1.63 liter four-cylinder engines. Ford says the cylinder's heads can overheat and crack, causing leaks. That was your Royal Fidelity Business News. I'm Juanita Swain.